Hey, this is Russell Moore, and this is One Thing You Missed. Uh, this week uh, is the uh, release of Disney's remake of The Lion King, uh, which comes in a whole flurry of, uh, of remakes that Disney has done of really good uh, animated, uh, animated movies uh, from before. Beauty and the Beast, uh, Dumbo, uh, Aladdin. Uh, I'm kind of curmudgeonly about this just because I think that most of these uh, animated movies were just fine uh, to begin with. But uh, one of the things you may not be thinking about as you're deciding whether or not to go see The Lion King is whether or not seeing it would make you a fascist. Uh, that was an article that was in the Washington Post this week uh, by a professor from the Netherlands who argued it doesn't matter how many times you remake The Lion King, The Lion King is fundamentally fascistic. Now, I'm reluctant to even talk about uh, this because I hate pseudo-controversies, uh, and this is one of them. I mean, nobody really believes uh, that The Lion King is uh, fascist propaganda. But the reason that I thought it might be important to talk about it is because some of the issues raised in this article actually are things we ought to uh, think about. Now, you know, the sorts of arguments that come up here are the kinds of things that we see really across the, the spectrum where people in my own uh, uh, denomination boycotted uh, Disney uh, a generation ago. And, and some of the things that you hear uh, from the left sometimes uh, sound like a leftish version of what I used to hear from the right with a, a kind of a second guessing of all art, that all art really has to be propaganda, which is really a, a Stalinist way of, uh, of seeing things. So I don't, I don't like that conversation. But the fundamental, uh, the fundamental point that this author is making is that because in The Lion King, the stronger animals uh, dominate over the weaker animals, that that actually is a, a fascistic view of, uh, of reality. And of course, if that's transferred, not just from uh, a movie, but from nature into the human realm, of course it, it would be. And the Bible explains this. So there's a reason why we like to watch movies with anthropomorphized uh, animals. We can connect with uh, animals who have human-like uh, sorts of uh, characteristics. Bambi, uh, when Bambi's uh, mother is killed, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, she's killed, uh, there, there, there's a sense of sympathy that comes with that because there's a, a human-like um, quality to Bambi and to the mother, the image in Dumbo, uh, again with the mother, uh, th there's a, a human-like quality there. Well, the Bible tells us that there's a reason why uh, animals have some similarities uh, to human beings, uh, that there's a, a sacrificial system where the blood of an animal is to point us toward uh, the blood of humanity. So there are some, some similarities uh, that wouldn't be the case, say, with a rock or, or with a tree. But the problem is, Whenever we think that nature by itself is an indicator of how we ought to live. So you can see that with the way that people will sometimes say, well, you know, monogamy isn't natural because if you look into uh, the animal world, you don't see monogamy uh, very often. And so therefore, uh, that, that ought to be the case with, with human beings. I've heard arguments for transgenderism on the basis of pregnant male uh, seahorses, and, and I've heard uh, arguments against helping the poor because in nature uh, that doesn't happen and the strong survive. Uh, those arguments don't work because the scripture gives us a fundamental distinction between humanity uh, and the rest of the animal world. Humanity is to image God uh, with, uh, with reason, with morality, with stewardship. Uh, over the rest of, of the creation, not in, a, in, a, in an exploiting way, but in a, a protecting, serving, God-imaging uh, sort of way. So when we look at nature, uh, what we're seeing is something that is not uh, in and of itself the way that God intended human beings to live. We're living in a fallen uh, universe where something has gone uh, deeply awry. And that's one of the reasons why Whenever you hear people starting to speak of other people as animals, uh, using animal language, or when you see people who start wanting to live um, by the uh, blood, red and 
in, uh, in tooth and claw, sort of the strong survive over the weak, uh, or being driven along by the appetites. You're seeing something that diverts humanity from where we're supposed to be into something that's ultimately uh, bestial. I don't think the Lion King is fascistic at all. I think the Lion King, I haven't seen this one yet, probably will go this weekend, uh, but at least the original uh, gives a, a largely very human view uh, of what it means to be in relationship, what it means to have disappointment, what it means to have frustration. But uh, there is a push and a pull toward human beings to either live like animals or to treat other people like animals we shouldn't live that way. We're not just mammals. We're God imaging human beings who ought to, um, ought to reign in our appetites and love and care for those who are weak and who are vulnerable. So I don't have a problem with the Lion King, except to say the lion is not sleeping, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And um, the circle of life ultimately really isn't a circle, but a cross. And that's what we need to keep in mind. We watched The Lion King. This is Russell Moore, and this has been One Thing You Missed.